I actually this morning want to come from the story of Angel Gabriel's visitation to Jesus, to Mary. And I just want to point a few things out from this verse. Luke chapter 1 and then verse 28. So I'm starting in Luke, the first chapter, verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And the angel, and, and, and then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this thing be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered her, and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Three things I want to point out from these verses. Just three things. And these things will form the prayer and fasting that we will engage in in the last three days of this year. That is starting on Wednesday, continuing on Thursday, and ending on Friday. These three things I want to point out to you. The first is the salutation of the angel unto Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Thou art highly favored. If you are a child of the Most High, whether you like it or not, whether you understand it or not, you are highly favored. You are highly favored. And then the second thing he said is, the Lord is with thee. The Lord is with thee. How exciting to know the presence of God. The Lord is with thee. If you have given your life to Jesus Christ, the Lord comes to abide in you and with you. And so our first prayer point for the first day of our fast is, Lord, what do I need to do to enjoy your presence day by day? day after day as we enter 2020 it will be important that we know and walk in his presence so that's the first prayer point then the angel said blessed art thou amongst women blessed are you amongst men blessed are you amongst women but blessed means, amongst other things, highly spoken of. So shall you be highly spoken of because you will make an impact wherever God leads you. Amen? Amen. Then the next thing was Mary was troubled at, his, at such a greeting. This is, Mary was an Old Testament saint. In the Old Testament, the, whole, the angel Gabriel didn't come to just anybody. He went to prophets and priests, but mostly prophets. 
And here comes Angel Gabriel, the messenger of God, to Mary. Of course she was troubled. Because it just wasn't something that normally happened. In verse 31, he now made a promise. He made a promise to her. A promise that had come from God. He said, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. The second point I want to make today is that every promise that God gives to us begins with a word. Begins with a word. So the promise is fulfilled because we take hold of that word. We believe on that word and we act on that word. But if God makes a promise and we just sit back and wait for it to happen, we may be waiting for a very long time. He spoke a word to Mary. But she didn't understand it. So she asked him a question. How shall it be? Our second prayer point for, for the Thursday is, Lord, help me not only hear your word, but know when you are speaking to me. Know, know how what happened to Samuel. The first two times God called him, he didn't know what it was because he didn't have the experience of hearing from God. May you hear from God consistently from now on. That's the prayer point. That you get a word, you understand the word, and you walk in the power of God's word. Amen. The promise was very significant. First of all, she said, he shall be called Jesus. And Jesus is, a, is the same as Jehoshua, Joshua. God is with us. She said, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. These are all words being spoken into Mary's life. To be conceived by the, the, in the womb of faith and brought forth through the labor of activity. He shall be given the throne of David. I know David was one of the most significant kings and this is why a lot of, of Jews missed it. Because they expected a political messiah because David was mentioned in this poem. So they're still waiting. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. May we hear a word from God in season. In answer to Mary's request or request for an explanation, how shall this thing be? The angel answered unto her and said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. It happened to Mary. And it still happens today. So as we go into the new year, this is our third prayer point on the third day. May we know how to walk in the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus and walk not after the flesh, but walk in the Holy Spirit. That will be our prayer. That every promise we have received, we will submit to the Holy Spirit and the power of the Most High. This means essentially that you do not execute on your own. You allow the Holy Ghost to execute whatever he has said. Now, he will use you sometimes. He say, okay, do this, do that. He may use others. But it is the Holy Spirit that executes, not you. Amen. And, and then finally, um, I've given you the three prayer points. 
But finally, just one extra point for, for our consumption for today. And that is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 36 and 37. And the angel also said to her, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, shall, shall she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Oof. This is what I call a faith extender. God wanted to trigger her faith and gave her information that only he could know. Your cousin is carrying a baby. Your cousin had been written off by people, by men, and told that she's barren, but she's already six months pregnant. So that Mary would visit Elizabeth and see this, and her faith will be extended. God gives us faith extenders to help us build our faith. But we could miss them if we are not looking out for them. If we're doing the first three things in our prayer point, if we learn to live in his presence, if we're looking out for his word and discerning his word, and if we're depending on the power of the Holy Ghost, we will know, we will not miss the faith extenders that he sends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 